Hello, I'm Brian McGrath, one of the Mill Creek Supervisors. On this program, I'll be introducing you to Mill Creek's new Public Works Director, Gary Snyder. The position is new. Mill Creek has never had a Public Works Director before. Gary is not. Hello, Gary. Good morning, Brian. Uh, you've been with the township for a long time. Maybe you could give us a little background. Let us know uh, how you got your start with the township. Um, I was hired by the township in June of 1971 as a sewer laborer. Um, that position I held for 12 years and then was promoted to the assistant head foreman in the sewer department, which was a position I held for 27 years. Uh, after that, uh, I was promoted to head foreman. Uh, that position I held for six years. And this year when the new director of public works came up, uh, I was fortunate enough to get the promotion to that job. Now, there's a lot of municipalities that have public works directors. I know the city of, uh, city of Erie has one. There's a lot of other ones in, throughout the state. Uh, two key retirements in, uh, in positions in the township came up recently. Gary Walters, the head foreman in the streets department, and Bill Hitchcock, the uh, operations manager uh, in the vehicle garage, uh, both retired this year. And uh, it's a good chance, the supervisors thought this would be a good chance to kind of coordinate the, the two, uh, or actually the three departments, with the sewer department also. Uh, that got the, kind of the supervisors talking about a public works position. What, uh, what got you interested in that position? Uh, well, like I said, I've been here for quite a few years. And uh, quite frankly, you, you run out of challenges after a while. And uh, it was something new that I thought, you know, it's always good to be the first of anything. Um, so, you, you know, you get a chance to set the bar. We hope that's the case. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you like to see uh, this position go? Now, you're, you're in charge of the streets, the sewer, and the vehicle garage. Um, where would you like to see that, uh, that position, the public works position, take you uh, as far as what would you like to see get done with the township? Um, well, I think we, you know, we, we can always tweak everything that we have. Um, the worst thing a township can do is say we've done this for the last 30, 40 years. Uh, there's new things out we've there. We've always done it that way. We've always done it that way. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. a, a terrible sentence. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think with a fresh pair of eyes and uh, the days of being dumb municipal workers mm -hmm. has gone by the wayside. Um, there's just too many things out there that are, are technical now and mm -hmm. have to have some background. You have to have some background in a lot of different things. Um, so I think we need to expand on those roles a little bit. That's been the case for uh, <clears throat> excuse me a number of years with the requirement for certifications. Now, you're familiar with the sewer department, and uh, we had sewer and water. Uh, maybe you can give a little idea to the folks of what types of uh, training or certification those employees have to have now. Uh, well, when we were still dealing with water, um, we had to have certified operators. And those mm -hmm. uh, that regulation is, those certifications are done through the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. Um, also, on the sewer side of things, um, we have to have a certified operator. Now, we're fortunate enough, I think we have six now in the, oh, okay. in the sewer Good. department. Um, the Department of Health in Erie kind of oversees us rather than DEP um, in Erie. Um, so, uh, they come in and do an audit once a year, uh, make sure that we're doing everything that we should be on the sewer side of things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's always continuing education along with those certifications. And you say we have six employees certified. Right. That's good to know. Um, <clears throat> on the street side, we have, well, we have any number of uh, positions. We, they don't just plow snow, uh, obviously. Uh, we do a lot of uh, other road maintenance work. Uh, the township is fortunate, I believe, to have their own uh, asphalt plant. Can you give us a little background as far as what types of maybe certifications or uh, the employees that operate the asphalt plant and, and put the put the asphalt down, what types of uh, certifications they have? Well, we're fortunate enough there. We have two certified plant operators. Um, that's also done through the state. Uh, and we have three certified uh, field technicians. Um, those are the folks that would uh, oversee the laying of the blacktop, mm -hmm. uh, the prepping of the roads. Uh, and various other things. Um, they've had to expand that role a little bit now with the American with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. It's not just putting blacktop down on the road. Um, there are certain levels, uh, grades that have to be done at each intersection. Right. Uh, so those roles have expanded and we're, we're fortunate enough to, to have that. Uh, and we are unique in, in having our own asphalt plan. Mm -hmm. 
which is uh, my personal belief is a, is a help to the township. We, we uh, our, our paving crew, uh, which is, I guess, anywhere from 12 to maybe 15 guys at a time, um, they have to be very well trained. Uh, it's more than just dumping asphalt into a, into a paving machine and then putting it down on the road. Whether it's the roller or the asphalt, uh, the, the paver operator, uh, there's a lot of training that goes involved. And since we're talking about uh, paving and, and asphalt, that's a big part of what the streets department does, uh, road maintenance. Can you give us an idea of what's, what's on the agenda for this year? Uh, what types of projects you have, you have planned? Um, well, as our paving list sits now, we have 43 streets that are going to be either paved, sealed, or uh, reclaimed. Okay. Um, the paving um, is usually, it's either, if the, if the road is in pretty good shape, we do an overlay. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have about three miles of that plan for just, this year. Just the overlay? Just the overlay. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, milling and reclaiming is about six miles okay. that we're going to do this year. Um, now the milling is just where they, we have a private company come in and they grind down the surface of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, we haul that away, uh, but we stockpile it in our yard. Uh, everything is recycled uh, when we do our milling. Uh, we use that for filling in cross stitches, driveway pipes, uh, and uh, other various things where mm -hmm. we get a good compaction and it doesn't settle much. Comes in handy. It does come in handy. Yes. Um, we, uh, after that, the road is, is swept. If there's any spills that need to be repaired or manholes raised or anything, that's done at that time. And then it People is- People are probably pretty familiar with that when you see a milled road, you yeah. have to kind yeah. of dodge do the slalom course around the, yeah. around the uh, manholes because they're too high for a little while. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, so, and then that's, that's overlaid with, with a wear course. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, roads that we call reclaiming. Um, when we find out who the contractor is gonna be through the bid process, um, they come in and they take a core sample of the road. Um, they take it to their labs and uh, it's mostly a tartan chip roads that we do this on. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what we do is it gets ground up a contractor comes in with his machine, it gets ground up kind of like a, a huge rototiller. Right. Um, we add Portland cement to it, um, it and it's all leveled out and through his machine. It's just a, a one-step process. Mm -hmm. um, then we come in and uh, we overlay that with, with, uh, with asphalt. Hot asphalt over top. Hot asphalt over that. That way we have a good base. Yeah. I mean, for now, a num not too many years ago, four or five years ago, we had been using, and for a number of years we did go this route as far as the reclaiming, where they would mix oil instead of the Portland cement um, through some things that we learned not only by experience but visiting other municipalities. Uh, the newer technique of using Portland cement that you mentioned uh, was uh, kind of introduced to the township. And I think we're finding that that's a much, it sets up much better, it has a much better base for the asphalt before, before it goes down. Uh, Gary, you mentioned uh, the, the contractor uh, doing the, the milling work. Now we're in mid-June now when we're recording this, but uh, is that something that's going to be happening in the, in the near future? Uh, he's scheduled to be in, um, I think, the week of the 27th of June okay. uh, is when we'll start our milling. Uh, we have started some overlay work already where we didn't have to um, go to the milling process. Mm -hmm. Um, along with these roads that we're doing now, um, we, uh, we put a tar and chip base over the top of them. Um, it seals it mm -hmm. and it gives us a good wear course. Um, those done generally on roads that aren't high traffic areas. Right. Uh, so that, you know, and we found out that we have really good luck with that holding up. Good. Uh, you, you brought up the, uh, the tar and chip process, something that folks may not realize that uh, uh, we've gone together with multiple municipalities. I think that this year may have been seven or eight municipalities that Harbor Creek actually uh, puts the group together. So those municipalities kind of piggyback on, on each other's bids to get a better price. And this year we think that we got a, a pretty good price. It's nice to see the multiple municipalities working together. It's sort of like through the Council of Governments, although that isn't handled through the COG. The COG does do a lot of our uh, bidding, the bidding process for things like you mentioned, milling, uh, reclaiming, they handle that, that process. So uh, multiple municipalities can 
can go together and hopefully hopefully get a better price. Um, Gary, you talked about uh, 43 roads that you have planned for uh, being paved this year. Can you maybe hit on some of the highlights, some of the some uh, of the major projects? Some of the major roads we're going to do is Court Avenue from 36 to 38th Street. Okay, that's a big uh, stretch. That is a big stretch. Mm -hmm. um, in the Woodhaven area, we have uh, three roads that we're going to do: Pine Tree Terrace, Rustic Patio, excuse me, four, okay. and Holiday Drive. All right. Um, those roads, uh, I'm sure the folks have already seen the spill work is being done on them to make sure they're okay. up where we need them to be. Prep work before you get there? Right. Okay. Um, probably the biggest one we're going to do is 6th Street from Pittsburgh Avenue to Westlake Road, and that will include the bike paths. That's um, a high so traffic area. High traffic area. Yeah. Um, we're going to try and get that one done earlier than later simply because of the summer and the, the amount of traffic before that they Before the traffic at the peninsula picks up? Okay. Right. Uh, 54th Street from uh, Washington Avenue to Clinton um, is going to be another That also big gets one. a lot of traffic. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the Davis Bryant and Bible area in through there. And uh, East Grand View from Route 8 to Davison in the Bell Valley area. stretch. Yeah, right. High traffic, right. Uh, um, you mentioned 6th Street from, I think you said from Pittsburgh to Westlake Road. Right. right? Um, that had been, a, and a lot of people may not realize this, that had been a state road for a long time. It started out as a state road. Uh, so there's actually concrete under that. A number of years ago, actually when I first started with the township, um, we came in and the streets department milled that all out right down to the concrete and put a uh, fiber mat down before they paved it. And it's actually held up pretty well, but now, like I said, uh, there's a lot of traffic and through the years it's, it's taken a beating. Uh, it's time, and uh, it's good to see that we're going to. And I think you said you're, we're going to mill it all out. Yes. Mill it down, and then and then uh, probably put a leveling course and a top on it. Correct. Beautiful. All right. That'll be that'll be nice uh, for the for the tourists coming in and for the general public using that. Um, Gary, you mentioned briefly uh, the reclaiming of of uh, tar and ship roads. About how many about how many miles of that you're going to be doing this um, year? This year we've got uh, just about two miles on tap to do. Okay. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's like I said, it's it's on the lower traffic areas. So there's, we don't concentrate on that as much as we do the milling and paving. So those roads that are now tar and chip will be a paved asphalt road. Correct. So I'm going back a number of years, probably close to 25. Uh, the township had about 60 or 65 miles of tar and chip roads uh, in the township. Uh, through this process that you're talking about where we reclaim the roads and then, and then pave them, we're down to about 30 miles now. So we've cut that number in, in half. So we still have some tar and chip roads, but nowhere near the number that we, that we had a number of years ago. Um, before you, whether it's pave a road or whether you want to go back after you've paved a road, I know the township uh, last year purchased a new crack seal machine. Maybe you could give us a little idea of what we're going to be doing with that and uh, how much that, that new machine costs. <laughs> uh, that new machine was about $53,000. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure people have seen it on the PennDOT roads. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, anywhere between a four and six man crew. Uh, they blow all the cracks out, all the dust and the stone and that, and then they have a wand that they go over the crack with and it puts uh, hot asphalt into those cracks. Mm -hmm. um, what's the idea there? Why do you want to do that? Well. Anything, anytime we can keep water or the frost free cycle from getting down underneath the, the blacktop, sure. um, that's where we have a hard time. Uh, we were fortunate with this last winter. Um, didn't get too cold. It didn't get too cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't a lot of that frost uh, free, free cycle. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do with that. It's just, just to keep the water and the moisture out of those okay. from getting underneath the blacktop. Now, after you've paved the road, I've seen um, our crews out um, in a lot of places where you would seal the, the joint on the middle of the road and at the intersections, probably the same idea to keep the, keep the water out. Exactly. So that's going to be a, uh, a nice new benefit. I know the township for a number of years, we had to contract that out because we didn't have our own machine to do it. So hopefully this will not only do a, a nice job, but we'll, we'll be able to do more of it. Correct. Uh, you mentioned it's a four or six man crew. The contractors who used to come in to do this for the township, they'd have to do, uh, you know, have flagmen out and, and have the, the signs set up, and we'll have to do that. But it'll be 
I think much more cost effective if we can if we can do it ourselves. Definitely, and we can do it at our our pace. Um, anytime you when have we to, need it, right? Anytime yes. you have to bid something out, mm -hmm. you're at the contractor's disposal of when he can come in and do things. Sure. Now um, we have obviously a lot of work to do as far as road maintenance goes. How about uh, stormwater? We that's always been an ongoing problem in the in the township where uh, you know you get hit with a heavy rain and and there's some flooding. Um, are there any uh, storm sewer projects planned for uh, the streets department this year? Um, there are. Um, we've uh, we've done a couple of them. Uh, we had to uh, get a private contractor in to do a large one from 38th Street down to the uh, floodwater detention basin behind the intermediate school on okay. Cahi Road. Mm -hmm. um, that will take hopefully take care of some of the flooding we have uh, coming out of Bel Air Estates. And, yeah, in the past, I know uh, I've seen it, and, and probably other folks have too. That uh, the water actually comes across 38th Street when there's a heavy rain, goes down through the football field, and creates a real, real mess. And right. So that should take care of that. We, we hope. We hope. Yes. We hope. Good. Um, we've done uh, this year already. We've done Bondview, which in the same area. In the same area, which ties into that. Mm -hmm. um, Haven Street was done this year uh, already. That's uh, uh, other than. Patching in the cross pat the cross cuts, mm -hmm. um, that one's done. Good. Um, right. The uh, next ones on the list are, are Hampshire, Amherst, and West 40th Street. Um, I have to kind of preface this: we don't have that crew running all year long. Sure. Um, with having so many people on the paving crew, um, we have to rob people from different things. Yeah. So generally, the uh, storm sewer gets done in the spring and the fall uh, is when we usually work on that. Um, along with our rebuilding of spills and mm -hmm. repairs. But uh, summer maintenance is probably road, is primarily road maintenance because the, you have to have good weather to do it. It always kind of is funny or a little humorous when you hear people saying, oh, here comes the barrels out again and here comes all the tearing up the roads and why do they do it when the tourists are in town in the busiest part of the, the year in the summertime? Well, you can't pave roads in the winter. Right. And, and uh, so we have to, like you say, kind of rob the employees from the from the storm sewer jobs to put them on uh, on the paving crew in the in the summertime. Uh, what other th kinds of things are the are the crews doing as far as uh, prepping roads or uh, other kind of maintenance pro programs in the summer? Um, well, we're also doing uh, storm spill mm -hmm. um, repairs. Um, so far on our list, we've done 80, and that's this year from uh, uh, around I want to say the first of April. Okay. Through the first week in June. So we've got 80 done now. Correct. Okay. Um, and that's with a four-man crew. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, so that they they work real hard at, at yep. getting that done. Um, I know there's a lot of barrels still sitting out yes. there, and uh, we probably still have 74, or 75 left to do. Okay. Um, so hopefully in the fall we'll be able to pick up on those. And that's kind of a never-ending job because we may get those 74, or 75 done, and in the meantime. We'll spot more. The foreman will be out, or the crews will be out, and they'll say, "Okay, this one need, needs it too." So, it's it, that's it, one where that's job security that, there. That's, that, that, that's, that job's never going to go away. And I think a, a big portion of that, and I try to explain this to people when they ask about why do the catch basins fall apart the way they do. Years ago, when a developer would uh, put in a subdivision, a, a road, or new homes, um, they were permitted at that time to build the catch basins out of hollow core block, and the salt, we use a lot of salt, the salt gets down and eats the joints, eats the mortar, eats the block, and the next thing you know, the, the, the grate on top of the catch basin is, is caving in. We don't allow that anymore. Now they're all, they have to be poured concrete, so they last much, much longer. And Gary, I think that what we do primarily now is when it comes to replacement, that's what we're doing also, right? Correct. Okay. So um, all the risers and that that we use now are uh, solid. precast, solid. Beautiful. All right. What are, the, what are the kind of uh, jobs are the, are the crews doing, let's say, when uh, the weather doesn't cooperate and all of a sudden you have uh, uh, maybe some rain or, or some cold weather? What kind of things can the, the crews be doing then? Um, we still go out and uh, dip ditches. Uh, they get overgrown with weeds and, and that and sure. slow down the flows. Uh, we also uh, will clean spills and jet pipes. Uh, a few years back, we got our first uh, jet vac truck in the streets department. Um, huge help. Yeah. Um, it saves from somebody going down in the catch basins, which is never a good idea. No, right. Um, and uh, 
like I said, we jet those. Uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, we, uh, we have a, a fairly new mowing vehicle that we go out and we, we mow the berms. Yep. Um, and cut another back. never ending yes. job. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, the minute you get it done, it's time to start yeah. all over again. 200, over 200 miles of roads, and they don't all have the, the grass berms. A lot of them are in, in subdivisions, but um, the guy doing the mowing, he's, he's kept busy all summer. Yes. Absolutely, yes. yes. Um, we also, uh, we have the street sweepers out. That's another one of those never ending jobs mm -hmm. from uh, after the winter, all the grit and, and that that falls off of vehicles and sometimes that we have to put down in order yeah. to, to give people traction. Um, instead of it going down the spills and plugging the pipes up, we try to get it swept up with the, uh, with the sweeper. Now I know that years ago, uh, the township had two street sweepers that we would start one at one end of the township and one at the other. And it, again, that just took forever. Uh, but that was back when we were using um, a mixture of salt and like you said, grit or anti-skid so that in the springtime, the roads looked pretty dirty. Right. Um, the township has gone to primarily uh, just straight salt, although there have been times, last year a little bit, the year before quite a bit, when the temperature gets down too low, down below zero, uh, the salt doesn't work, and you have to have something for, like you say, for, for some traction. So now all of a sudden, uh, We've got some dirty roads, and, and we get calls from people on occasion, but it's nice to know that we have the equipment that can get out there and, and get it cleaned up. Gary, you mentioned uh, a jetter. Um, we know what that is. Right. Maybe you can explain to the folks what, what jetting a pipe actually is. I know that we get a lot of complaints from people with driveway pipes that, that uh, you know, they get filled with dirt. Explain a little bit what a, what a jetter will do. Okay, a jetter is a, is a high pressure water truck. It's got a, uh, a hose on it and a special head on top of that. And uh, the truck holds probably anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 gallons, depending on what type of truck you buy. Mm -hmm. um, it has a 2,000-pound uh, PSI rate of water. Mm -hmm. um, so this, the way the head is designed, it shoots this head up the pipe to the blockage. Um, it has a jet on the front of it and it kind of eats away at the blockage. Works its way into the pipe? Right, yeah. and on the back of the head, it's shaped like a fan, uh, the water. So when you pull it back, it brings all the grit, leaves, whatever may be so in that pipe. Busting through the blockage and bringing the dirt back. Right, um, they're again much, uh, much easier than the old ways where we used to have to take a rodder. Yeah. Uh, those were just flexible rods and try pushing them up there. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, just a whole lot more efficient. Good, good. Uh, see, we're getting close to the end, but before we do, I wanted to make sure that we hit on another piece of equipment that we purchased a couple of years ago, the, our hot patch machine. Maybe you could give us a little detail as to what we do with that. Right, it's a, it's a trailer mounted machine. Um, what we do is we can put um, uh, asphalt blocks in this and it heats it up um, to where it's uh, malleable. Okay. And uh, we can actually put uh, hot blacktop down in small areas. Um, doesn't have to be put down with a paving machine. Um, it's good for large potholes. If we have a, a little section that's uh, uh, roughed up from mm -hmm. traffic and that, we can use that to patch those in. So instead of using, in the past, uh, the throw and go, the cold patch, we still do use a lot of cold patch. Unfortunately, we have to have it in the winter time. But this allows us the chance to go out and put hot material down, which is a more Permanent patch? Yes. Now, how many uh, employees does it take to go out and use that uh, piece of equipment? Well, there again, it probably at least four. Yeah. Um, you know, anytime we're out on the road, we have to think of safety first. A crash truck? Right. Okay. So you have to have somebody in front and behind yeah. um, and with a flagman. So sure. uh, it's it's labor intensive mm -hmm. in that from that aspect, but you, know, you can never have too much safety. Well, and, and again, using the, the hot material is so much better than the, the cold patch. It sets up better, a more permanent patch. Uh, with the cold patch, unfortunately, what we see is having to go back over and over and over again. It's uh, much more cost effective. And again, that was an expensive piece of equipment, but one that we hope will uh, really pay dividends in the future. Uh, before we wrap up, Gary, uh, do you have any other uh, thing that any other projects or anything else that you'd like to touch on for the for the township that uh, we can fill them in on and let them know what um, uh, what you have planned? Just real quickly, um, on the sewer side of things, we have a, a, an infill 
inflow and infiltration crew out. Um, right now we're um, grouting the sewer mains. That's any leaks that we have mm -hmm. in the joints. Um, we've been really lucky in saving uh, the taxpayers a lot of money that way. You, you keep the clean water out of the system and you don't have to pay to treat it. Correct. That, that's been, what's that been going on about maybe six or seven years maybe? Mm -hmm. now? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And it's been very, uh, very helpful for the township. What we've also found is Harbor Creek Township has wanted to, uh, to get into the inflow and infiltration uh, program too. And our employees are helping out Harbor Creek. I think uh, overall it's not only a good environmental program, but it really helps cost, uh, cut costs for, uh, for the customers. Correct. Beautiful. Correct. Uh, well, Gary, I appreciate uh, doing the program with you and uh, introducing you to, to the public. Um, we wish you nothing but the best. Uh, you've been a great employee for a long time. Uh, what'd you say it was, 40? 46. 46 years, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time. Uh, we hope you stick around for uh, many more years and, and uh, you've done a great job in the past and I'm, I'm sure you'll continue to do so in the future. So good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, and with that, I hope the folks at home have appreciated or got a chance to meet Gary Snyder, our new Public Works Director in Mill Creek Township. And until uh, the next time, We'll probably be doing a show on winter maintenance, but uh, until then, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.